Alright guys, first brew day video from the new house. Welcome to the new house. What we're doing today, even though we have it nice and frosty outside, um, we are doing a tropical stout. Now I did one last year. I really liked it, however, I got a little bit of pushback because I did not follow a couple of parameters of what you would do if you were making a pure tropical stout to style. So, as you just saw, I got the right sugar. I got a version of the right sugar this time. I went to a, uh, it's an Asian grocery store, but they also had a Hispanic section. I got the sugar. The other thing I did not do last time was use a lager yeast. I think it, I think I had an ale yeast on hand. This time, we've got lager yeast. So, there you go. Um, the other thing I'm doing is I'm dialing it back a little bit gravity-wise. Last time it was like 1077 or so. Um, I haven't been able to brew because I've been moving. I did get one batch in, in the new house, but I need to turn this around quicker. And last time I actually had to age the 1077 beer for a couple of months before it was <clears throat> kind of drinkable. So I'm dialing it back, hopefully in the upper 1060s. You can see here, previously I did 12 pounds of Mars Otter, I'm just doing 10. So that's where it will be scaled back a little bit. 8 ounce roast barley, 8 ounce chocolate, 1 pound of double roasted crystal, that's the DRC. 8 ounce of Carafa 3 this time, 1 ounce of Magnum to bitter. And here we go. This is where I'll be, this is what I did last week. It worked out okay, I mashed and collected the word in here. Then I don't have my walkout tuck under garage, but I do have that garage out there. So I just did the boil out there. Um, and then I brought it in two and a half gallons at a time to the basement to chill. I don't know what y'all do when you're in the winter and you don't have running water out to the garage. What do you guys do with your work? Do you bring it all inside all at once five gallons do you got to go downstairs like i do i'm not really interested in carrying 60 plus pounds of hot boiling wort and a wort chiller and a heavy stainless steel kettle down my steep stairs so i split it up a slight bit of extra work but much easier and pretty doable so got the mash water getting heated up and we'll get this party started so far so good, I got 7.2 gallons of 12.5 bricks, which is 50, 1050. That will boil down, so that gravity will go up, and then I also have that one pound of that sugar, so hopefully it will get uh, into the mid 1060s. I'm going to boil some on the stove to reduce some of that volume. I'm gonna be dissolving the sugar in there and I have the rest of it out in the garage coming to a boil. So with this sugar that's really hard, um, as you can see it already is breaking up. I just have this little pot on low and it will dissolve here easily enough and we'll add it back into the whole boil. So here is the new brewing location in the garage. I got a fan set up. I used to do a fan to help get the steam out of the tuck under, but I think it maybe helps with evaporation and that it, it increases it, uh, I think. And I really need to boil this all down. So yeah, previously I was in the tuck under, which was nice for year round brewing. But, I mean, today it's fine. It's not that cold out. If it was really, really cold and I want to brew like anyone else in this environment, it will be, and you're outside, it could be a little chilly, but we will deal with that when we need to. Well, here's the new laundry room brewing area. I have this really burly, I think it's a metal uh, old sink. Uh, so yeah, it's, we'll get the official reading. It's going to be about 1064, 65, 66. 
Um, it would have actually been higher, but I didn't boil that 7.2 gallons down to 5. It's probably more like 5.25 or so. But, got it in the fermenter, got it chilled, aerated it. It's ready to go. So, here we are. Pretty much your moving scene, boxes, paint cans, and we will see what it will be. It might, the last beer I made I had to bring upstairs because it was a little too cool down here for this San Francisco lager, California common lager yeast drain, electric fireplace. I suppose I could have turned that on. Here, give me a sec. The delicious electric warm glow there it be so yeah hopefully a nice uh, imperial stout tropical stout is born okay we are gonna try the tropical stout chip's gonna yeah it's over there over yonder so tropical down here oh yeah we got the we got the um tropical laundry machine going oh you can pour it aggressive actually i should have mentioned it's not oh. super duper carbonated but it is carbonated Yeah, there we go. And now we're upstairs in the living room. Cheers. Welcome to my new house, my new living room. New the, year. The skateboard museum. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Skate or die, brah. Alright, so here we go. Now, this is the second time I made a tropical style. I have a video on the first one. This is a lot of yeast, and I used the Pilconchillo sugar to be pronounced properly by somebody else. Pilconchillo? I think it's P-I-L. It's, it's, it's in the reference point. Um, any hoosies, uh, it got down to 1020. So it didn't go particularly low, or no, I'm sorry, 1019. Mm -hmm. I think my previous one was 1018. The style guidelines would have you getting this beer uh, into the 1010 to 1018 range. OG at 1056, 1075. I was 1069, so I was right in there. I think I just said it. Uh, check the, you know, the, the blog. Uh, yeah. We've been drinking it a little bit. We're getting some aromas <clears throat> and some flavors. Mm -hmm. Definitely has a, I mean, it's common with these higher roasted grains um, that I use, such as 8 ounce roasted barley, 8 ounce chocolate, about 1 pound. Oh, this is double roasted crystal. I don't know if you saw that. A whole pound of that. And 8 yeah, ounces of crap of 3. Okay. Yeah, so it's 2 pounds of those, kind of those roasted type yeah. ones. And um, it's got, they got the burnt, you the know, the barley sugars. Cows. The coffee and the chocolate, I get a lot of that. We talked about that anisey, licorice y, kind of just, I don't know, for lack of a better word, like these cool spices. Molasses. Yeah. Perhaps. i pretty sure I have a video of me trying to break up this sugar and a little bit of word in a pan, which you have not seen. Mm -hmm. But um, it worked. It worked well for doing that. Slow and steady, I think, is the goal there. I think I tasted it. Don't remember if I tasted it on camera, but it did have kind of a molasses taste. I looked it up. Uh, they create this by evaporating the cane juice. Um, I don't know if it's boiling it, evaporating it, and just condensing it into this crystallized sugar kind of thing, which you saw in that. Um, I think I had like a hockey puck. Mm -hmm. Pretty sure you can get it in a cone form. Um, panella. I don't want to say that is another similar type of this same type of thing. I think it's kind of a branding thing. It's like a name. Uh, in different or mm -hmm. Mexico is the Pilconchillo origin brand. Central America maybe is like Panela. Okay. Something like that. Um, the style guidelines, you know, deep brown to black. That's true. Sweetness is evident. Moderate to high intensity. Roasted grain aromas. Moderate to high. I think that's there. Can have coffee or chocolate notes. Ding ding. Definitely. Fruitiness medium to high. That now that you won't get that with a lager yeast. So I don't know why. They I was shocked that to see that in there, but maybe it's a mixture of the dark roasted malts with the sugar can kind of come up with like plums and berries mm, and a little that bit. type of fruit. Maybe, because I definitely don't think it's like strawberry or like here it's pineapple. A, no, right? Dried or fruit. fruity esters of some ale, uh, dried fruit. It says uh, vinous aromatics. Does that mean grape like? Mm -hmm. uh, Hop aroma low to none, that's true. I had one ounce of magnum bittering. I think there could be a little bit of hop bitterness, but with all the other stuff in there, it's 
hard to get. Uh, quite sweet with smooth dark grain flavors and restrained bitterness. Roasted grain and malt character can be moderate to high. So that's kind of interesting. Not a lot of bitterness, but roasted grain character moderate to high. Well, the roasted grain character is kind of a bitter character, so that's right. kind of weird. Because I was thinking that it was fairly bitter considering how low it said the bitterness from the hops would be. But yeah, the double roast crystal, the roasted mm. barley, yeah. the chocolate. Medium to full body, smooth creamy character. May give a warming impression, pressure from alcohol presence. I don't think so. It's a high final gravity and you know medium alcohol, 6.5 is what I calculated. But yeah, I think that this beer in memory is a little more complex and perhaps interesting, uh, nuanced than my first version. So that being said, using this different sugar may have made a little bit of a difference. You know what I didn't do is go watch my tasting notes on my previous one to remind myself what I thought about that, but definitely if you like full rum. flavored stouts. Do you like rum and chocolate? Full flavored stouts, but not quite just trying to drink like an imperial stout. One of my favorite beers is a foreign extra stout. My favorite kind of stouts to make foreign extra stout. I like making that. I also like making a robust porter. So this is right in that trilogy for me. Mm. Um, it's lager yeast as opposed to an ale, but this time of year I always make one of these types of beers and I could see adding this into my rotation. You know, I just don't like mm. a lot of stouts to have around. It's so good though. It's so like, you like it? blankety of roasted coffee goodness. I'm glad you like it's it. It's a good bit of firm bitterness though, I think, between the roast and the hops. The hops might be I there. Feel like I feel like I had them smoother in commercial examples where it finishes a little bit yeah. more, like sweet, malty, and again that like coolly spice kind of from this licorice -y you feeling. Do you know if you ever had the lion stout when I was around? I don't know. Okay, I used to drink that stuff and it was definitely I think less I had better. one BJCP training. Definitely already. less less better. It used to yeah. just walk down to my liquor store a mile away and buy it and I, I don't think they it's They don't wrong. distribute to the US or just this area gave up? I don't know. That, that I don't know. But it was a, it actually has a good price point too, but anyway. Uh, that was from Sri Lanka. I know she was good stuff. Mm. Well, so there you have it. Welcome to the new house. Tropical Stout. Try it. I got a lot of different places to film footage here. I got a porch. I got a basement. I got a dining room table now. All upstairs, kinds of good stuff. Downstairs. That's outside. true. We could do an attic bedroom uh, video tasting sometime. Get Backyard. On Get on the roof. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.